It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today I'm going to cover desk screen. So this is a really cool little application. If somebody had asked me about this on the comments about a week ago, if I'd seen anything like this, and I thought, well, there's bound to be something open source out there that'll work. And, and this does. It's, it's interesting. So if you're ever looking for an extra monitor, but you thought, you know, I've got my smart device and I really just need something over on the side that I can keep an eye on while I'm working on my main screen. Or you say, I've got my tablet. I, I sure like to use that as just an extra monitor sometimes then desk screen might be exactly what you've been looking for. It's supposed to work on Linux, Windows, and Mac OS, which is awesome. And it works on iOS devices or Android devices whenever you're talking about your tablet device. And of course, Linux devices if you have a tablet or a Linux phone. So I think this is a really cool project. It is open source, so you can get out there and get the source code. You can see what they're doing. You can keep up with them. And it's really awesome. I think it's some pretty cool stuff that they've got going. So it tells you about the features that they've got. And then... Self-hosting it is really easy. It's really not even self-hosted. It's an application that you can just run. And in this case, they've got an app image, which I love app images. I know a lot of people like Flatpak or they like Snaps or, you know, different things like that. I'm definitely an app image person. I think that the ability to make that a portable application like that really works for me, where I can stick an app image on a thumb drive and I can take that with me anywhere and plug it into another machine and use that app image without having to worry about does that person have the software that I'm looking for. That's the, the real benefit to me of app images, whereas flat packs have to install some things in the background. You have to have flat hub and stuff like that or, or flat pack, you know, support in the system to start with, which a lot of them do now. But still, it makes it a little bit you still have to go install that application if you want to use it on somebody else's machine. Potentially, it's just not so easy. Same thing with snaps. So app image is just really great because it makes portable applications possible on Linux, which I love. So as we kind of go through this, you can kind of see what he's got here. He's got a little screenshot of what he's doing, which I think is pretty cool. But today we'll talk about just the software itself. Now, as you kind of look, you've got these downloads. So if you if you click on um, if you click on download, it's here on the main screen, and he's got video demonstrations, some things like that that you can go check out. Besides my video, how to use it. And it's really cool. It gives you a little QR code. You scan the QR code, and that basically brings up a, a pop-up on your phone or your tablet, and you say, yes, I want to open that basically web page. And then the web page gives you options. You know, do you want to use this uh, for the full screen, or do you want to use this as just for one application, which is kind of awesome. So we'll kind of go through that. So he's got a lot of really cool stuff here just on his on his home page. Um, so, so really awesome, I think. And, of course, you can download this stuff from here as well. So if we click on forums and then we go click on downloads. I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at Patreon. Seriously, you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week. I really, truly enjoy it, and I just can't say thank you enough. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel. Plus, you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally... If you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like, just click on that thumbs up, and that way YouTube knows that you like it, and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. So here's Linux app image right here. You can just get it straight from his page, but there is also the GitHub, so you can come over here and check out his GitHub, and if you come down here, you'll see on the releases section, he also has the latest release versions available. And again, if you scroll down through here, you'll see app image and you'll see EXEs and you'll see packages and you'll see DEBs and you'll see RPMs. So he's got a lot of different builds for this thing and you can kind of go check it out that way as well. But we can just download the app image from here. And there it goes. It's downloading. So app images are really, really easy applications, in my opinion, for Linux users. If your system will support app images, I think it's a great way to go. So what happens is you download the app image. So we just did that. And then you can open up your uh, favorite file explorer thing, and we'll kind of make this a little bit bigger. And we're going to go looking for the app image we just downloaded, which it should be in alphabetical order, I guess. Um, right here. It's right here, so you can see it. Now, if I double-click this, in KDE, it kind of figures out, like, hey, this is an executable file. Do you want to continue to run this thing? If, if you don't trust it, you shouldn't do that. And if I hit continue, it's going to go ahead and make it executable and then run for me, which is cool. But if you're not on KDE or if you don't get that for some reason, you can right click, click on properties, and then find the permissions tab. It may look a little different depending on your distro. And just check this box that says executable or yours might say run as an executable or run as application. There's a little checkbox on the permissions page that you need to check and that basically makes the application executable. Click OK. And now go back and you can double click it 
and it's going to open up the application. It might take a couple of seconds, just like it did. And you see here, he's got this thing where you can set day mode or night mode. So we'll just set night mode. Language is English, which is great. And then hit continue. Now he has some more stuff here again about, you know, contributing to the, the Ukrainian efforts that are going on. Again, completely up to you to do that. I think that's awesome that he wants to support them. So just know that that's there and that you can go do that. And I'm going to open up my tablet and I'm going to start recording from my phone. So this is going to be a little bit shaky and I apologize because it's not exactly going to be easy for me to do this, but we're going to do it. Let me get my camera open. Yeah, so I'm going to hold up my phone. So I'm going to hold my phone up and you can see up on the screen there that, I, that it's got the QR code right there. I'll point with the corner of the tablet. Get past all the weird prompts. And then hold that up and just scan that code. And if you see it on the tablet screen, you see right below it, there's a little yellow URL button right there. It just kind of went away because I've been sitting here too long waiting. But if I move the tablet around, it comes back. So that's kind of cool, right? So if I tap on that button, so you see it comes up and it says, hey, all right, I see what you want to do. And you've got a little bit of an option there, so cool. Now, back on the screen for a minute. You'll see that it pops up and it says, hey, this thing's trying to connect to your machine. So it says deny or allow. So we're going to allow. And then as that comes up, it kind of changes here on the tablet. And you'll see that it's got this little, hey, I'm trying to load things up. And then over here on the screen again, we've got, do you want to share the whole monitor or just one application? Now, I don't have a lot of applications open, but I'm going to pick the applications one. It's going to open up a window and it's going to show you all the different applications you've got running. And you can kind of choose which one you want to show. So let's just call, let's just do this, uh, I don't know. Yeah, let's do, let's do this one uh, for my community here on the chat. So it's going to start sharing that. It's showing you that it's going to start sharing it and what it's going to look like and that that's going to be your secondary monitor. So you just click OK. And then over here on the tablet, it is now being shared. And I can see that as my second monitor. Now, I can just run Rocket Chat on my tablet. But if I had a terminal screen or anything else up that I was running on the desktop and I just wanted to have this on a second monitor, this is really a great option. So I'm going to turn the tablet here. And you'll see that it gets a bit bigger. Now, I'm not really interacting with it on the tablet that much. I'm really still going to use my keyboard and mouse. So if I mount that tablet next to the screen, you can see that that will really become a useful tool. So this really becomes a very nice way to actually make everything function the way that you want. And so you see right now it's done. It says connect a new device. So I can do that. But I can also go here and I can just say, you know what? I want to see my connected devices. I can see what's happening here and I can say disconnect. So all this is done from the desktop. No problem. And on the screen here, it now tells me, hey, you, you just got disconnected. So I'm going to try to hold this up and I'm going to go through the process again. Uh, I'm going to turn my phone. Yeah, I'll leave my phone this way. I apologize for any kind of weird uh, kind of, I don't even know how to say it, reflections that you're getting. But my desk is full of stuff and I need to be able to record and talk at the same time. So we're going to try this again. So we're just going to go back to the main prompter here. And we're just going to say connect a new device. Now I get a QR code up on the screen, so you can see that. So down here you can see that I don't even have this running anymore, so I can just exit from that thing. And I'm going to open up my camera again. Okay, you see that it gives me the little yellow pop-up. I'm just going to touch that thing. Now it may be a little bit different on an Android device. There we go. So you can see that it's waiting. So if I go back up to my screen, it says, do you want to deny or allow this? And I'm going to say allow. And then it's going to say again, what do you want to do? So I'm going to say full screen this time. Let's just go full screen and see what it, see what it says we're going to do. I'm going to click on it. It's going to show you like, hey, I'm going to show you the full screen over on that device. Now, again, this could be something where I want to take my device with me and go use it to do it, you know, to do work somewhere else. So if I've got wireless keyboard and mouse, I could move away from the main screen. Or if I needed to disconnect my main screen for some reason, I could still use the wireless keyboard and mouse and, and use this tablet as a screen if I need to. So there's lots of different reasons you might want to use something like this. So I'm going to hit continue and you see right there it comes up and now you can see exactly what's happening on the screen it's pretty close i mean it is there is very little lag there i'd say you know less than a half second so that's pretty cool and then you can go here and click on what are, what are my connected devices and i can just disconnect so the cool thing is you can connect more than one device so let's go back and just try that real quick so let's say connect a new device so first i'm going to connect my tablet 
I'm going to go here and you'll see that I'm going to get the little yellow marker there and I'm going to touch that marker. Maybe. There we go. So now my tablet is set. I'm going to say allow, just like I did before. Well, we'll go ahead. We'll, we'll say rocket chat again. And we're going to say allow. And there's rocket chat showing up on my tablet. Now I'm going to add another device. And I'm going to use my phone, actually. So I'm going to scan this QR code. I'm going to stop recording for a second. I'm going to scan this QR code. I'm going to tap the, the little number. And it's going to tell me, hey, there's another device coming up. I'm going to say allow. Again, I'm going to say a different window. And let's go put my terminal on this one, even though it's really small. Um, I'm going to say go. And then here's my terminal on my phone. So now I need something else to actually show you that this thing is doing what I say. All right, so here I am on the webcam. I'm just going to wave at you there. I'm just going to show you as much as I can what I have set up here. So there's my main monitor, so you get the matrix effect. And then there's my tablet next to my drink. And here's my phone that shows the terminal. So I'll move this a bit closer. And you can see as I move my mouse around and I get to the terminal window, you can see here that I've got the terminal going and if I type I can do LS and there it is so it's actually showing up on my on my little screen down here so I have something running in the background that I'm just keeping an eye on on my phone and then over on the tablet I've got an eye on my chat and then I've still got everything else I can use on my desktop so if I move something to the front of the desktop you still don't use you don't lose it on the phone or the tablet. You're looking at those windows. So it's really kind of a cool application that lets you kind of keep an eye on multiple things going on. If you don't have an extra monitor, you don't have to use this thing. I guess uh, since I'm not showing you exactly the webcam, uh, you're not seeing everything. But yeah, so if I cover this up with the webcam, you see, of course, if I record the webcam, what it looks like. And then if I go back down, I can still see Rocket Chat, even though it's in the background behind the other windows here on the screen. And again, my phone still has everything set up so that I can see the terminal window. So if I'm running multiple things, this is a really kind of cool way to do this. Now, I know this isn't the best way to show you this video. I'm going to make this window a little bit bigger. I'm going to show it to you one more time. So there's my, my main monitor. You can see it's going crazy. Very cool. There is the tablet. And you can see that I've got Rocket Chat up and running. And I've got some stuff where people have asked a question. And then over here, of course, we've got the terminal and you can see that I can do things on that as well. So really a very, very simple way to do this and very quick, very easy. So that this works on iOS right through the browser that it works on, you know, other things like Android and Linux makes it really great. I think it's a really cool application and super easy to set up and, and get running. So this is Desk Screen. I think it's a really cool application. I love that the developer made this open source and I, I really do appreciate that he's trying to do something for his country and take those donations. So if you guys get a chance, if you want to donate, if it's something that's important to you, I think it's totally worth it. I'm not trying to leave anybody out. I'm not trying to say that you should go do that, but anytime you can support open source, it's absolutely worth it. It is 100% a great thing to do. So I hope you will. I hope you'll enjoy this. Hope you'll go out, that, go out there and give stars on his GitHub page and encourage him to keep making this because it's really great. And I hope you'll find some great uses and let me know if you do. Go over to discuss.opensourceisawesome.com join into the rocket chat into the community i want to build my community up you know 50,000 subscribers is great i don't have a lot of people on the community and i'd love to have more people to help support the ones that are coming to ask questions or help them troubleshoot uh, scott from scottabytes over there on the community a lot uh, he helps out a lot of people i try to get on when i can and help you guys out as well i love being on there and kind of checking things and seeing the conversations that are happening and joining in so i hope you guys will do that but get over there and tell us how you're using death screen tell me how you're using other open source projects that you love tell me how you're using things where you've seen a video that i made already and, and let me know about it because i want to hear about those things I, I, I really love hearing that you guys are getting something out of what i'm doing i hope you're doing well and i hope you enjoyed this if you did like subscribe tell your friends about it so they can come along on the journey with us and I'll talk to you next time.